spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean? To change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community and their country. You cannot change their mind even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. Exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. We have an update on the spread of the deadly coronavirus. Now, a short time ago, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak an international public health emergency. Today, I want to update you on the next stage of this momentous medical initiative. It's called Operation Warp Speed. The great national project will bring together the best of American industry and innovation, the full resources of the United States government, and the excellence and precision of the United States military. We have the military totally involved. Head of the Food and Drug Administration says he's prepared to fast track a coronavirus vaccine as quickly as possible if the benefits outweigh the risks. FDA chief Dr. Stephen Hahn telling the Financial Times a vaccine developer could receive federal approval before phase three trials are complete. We may find that appropriate. We may find that inappropriate. We will make a determination. The situation here in Santa Monica, California is very fluid. You can see police here now firing tear gas into the crowd. They are trying to push these folks back. recap how this incredible day played out. The Dow just had its biggest point drop in history, falling 1,190 points. That was a 4.4% drop. The Dow index has now lost 3,200 points this week alone. It is now down nearly 10% this year. The S&P, meantime, falling 4.4% as well, handing in its worst day since August of 2011. And this is the fastest correction, a 10% drop from the highs, in the entire history of the stock market. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no, closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. There should be universal wearing of masks. There should be the extent possible social distancing. But now the experts say with these variants, it's time to double up and wear two. This morning, Dr. Fauci endorsed the, endorsed the idea on the Today Show. If you have a physical covering with one layer, you put another layer on, it just makes common sense that it likely would be more effective more effective, especially with one new variant spreading much more easily. CBC's Contessa Brewer with us now to break down the science behind double masking and what we're all supposed to do. Contessa? Hi there, Chef. Yeah, the experts keep telling us that wearing masks is really about protecting ourselves, protecting others from ourselves in the event that we are contagious. But you know, if other people aren't wearing their masks or they're wearing them improperly, we need to protect ourselves. So experts say you can double up with a tight weave 
fabric mask for added protection. Now, Virginia Tech researchers found that doubling up these cloth masks increases the efficacy from 50 to 75 percent. A three-layer mask could block up to 90 percent of the particles. Well, maybe we need just one dose. That's the debate among medical experts across the country. New research shows a surprising level of protection after just one shot of the Pfizer vaccine. Time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. We could be just days away from giving, getting the COVID-19 vaccine here in the Carolinas. And even though getting just one dose will keep you safe for a, a little while, it's super important to make sure you get that second one as well. And I'm Karen Swenson. A third COVID vaccine could soon be on the market. FDA scientists say the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is safe and effectively effective, and more importantly, it works against all the variants. Kin Pharmaceutical Company is partnering with a national medical company to develop a COVID-19 vaccine that will be administered as a nasal spray. Says the nasal spray is a logical approach because the virus infects through the nose. And because of that, Dr. Brown explains the vaccine blocks the virus from coming in and coming out. I am joined by our science editor, Tom Clark, to answer your questions on the news that UK regulators have decided that people under 30 should not be given the AstraZeneca vaccine due to concerns over a very rare risk. The country's vaccination timeline is in disarray this morning following a late night press conference where the government shelved plans to roll out the AstraZeneca jab to millions of people under the age of 50. Christine Elliott was one of the first people to get the flu shot this morning at Women's College Hospital. Elliott is urging the public to get the free shot this year. Breaking right now at four, an 82 year old woman went to get her COVID-19 vaccine, but ended up getting injected with an empty syringe. We confirmed Pueblo's top health official knew about this error, but the public was never alerted. We were in the parking lot waiting um, the 15 minutes to see if she had a reaction. And then we were notified that there was a problem with her vaccine and that she actually never received it. That's when Jamie pulled out her phone and took a second look at a picture she snapped just moments before her grandma was injected. If you take a closer look at the syringe, it appears empty. Two different coronavirus vaccines continue to roll out across the country, but as millions of Americans are getting their vac vaccinations over the coming months, it's important to keep in mind that anyone who gets a vaccination, are you ready for it, could still end up getting sick with COVID-19. Dr. Christopher Ball with the State Laboratory says vaccine breakthrough cases are also something the state looks for. That is when someone contracts COVID-19 or a variant even after getting fully vaccinated.
Our main source here is the new updated guidance from the CDC. So the CDC says someone is considered fully vaccinated two weeks after they've had both doses of an mRNA vaccine like Pfizer or Moderna's or two weeks after getting a single dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Now, if you're fully vaccinated, here's what they say. Yes, fully vaccinated people can visit with other fully vaccinated people indoors without masks or social distancing. And yes, fully vaccinated people can visit people from one other household that's unvaccinated as long as no one there is at high risk of illness from COVID-19. Also, yes, if you're fully vaccinated and have no symptoms, you can hold off getting tested or quarantining if you're exposed to COVID-19. But some of their guidance hasn't changed. Even if you're fully vaccinated, here's what the CDC says. No, you can't take off or stop wearing masks in public. No, you can't stop social distancing in public. No, you shouldn't have medium or large gatherings just yet. And no, you shouldn't start more domestic or international travel yet either. It is also worth noting that the CDC has a few questions they can't answer yet. They say they're still learning how effective vaccines are against new COVID variants, how well COVID-19 vaccines keep people from spreading the disease, and how long the vaccines will protect people. Record numbers of Americans are getting vaccinated against the coronavirus. The U.S., the most vaccinated large nation in the world. Dozens of countries are now working to vaccinate their populations in an effort to end the global pandemic. President Biden says that by the end of his first 100 days, the United States is aiming to have administered 200 million doses. And by May 2021, every American adult who wants one will be eligible to get in line for a shot. That said, 30% of U.S. adults still don't want to get the COVID vaccine, but they may not have much of a choice. The federal government can, can require vaccination and things like that for coming in and out of the country. Both the state and city can have vaccine laws based on um, their legislative authority. The Brooklyn resident was recently let go from her job after refusing to get inoculated. I was sitting at home and I all of a sudden just opened an email. I'm sitting on my couch and it said, Basically, while we respect your decision at this time, your employment has been terminated. So can you actually be forced to take the COVID vaccine against your will in the United States? To be clear, the White House's chief medical advisor has already said that he doesn't think the federal government will ever make the COVID vaccine mandatory. However, powers at the city and state level, not to mention the legal rights granted to employers under U.S. labor law, may make it pretty difficult for some Americans to evade inoculation against the coronavirus. When I was health commissioner in Washington, D.C., we had uh, passed laws that required anyone who went to a um, school to um, be vaccinated against certain you know, preventable diseases. In general, these things are done at the state level, but big cities, for example, also have vaccine laws. When I was the city health commissioner in Washington, D.C., although that certainly functions as a state, uh, we also had vaccine laws in, the, in Washington, D.C. So far, no cities or states have made the COVID vaccine mandatory, though some places have started the conversation. So states and cities can require vaccines, and the federal government has a lot of influence as well. But the big question is whether the government will actually go through with rolling out a universal mandate. Let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread the disease. Even if you disagree, you have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, if can I stop you? State, Did, yeah. No right state, not to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. If the vaccination Where is that in the Constitution? To prevent if the vaccination is designed to prevent the spreading disease. If the vaccination is only to prevent a disease that you will get, for example, if there's a disease that will kill you, you have the right to refuse that, but you have no right to refuse to be vaccinated against a uh, contagious disease. Public health, the police power of the Constitution, gives the state the power to compel that, and there are cases in the United States Supreme Court. Thank you.
Vaccine passports are coming. Someday soon, you may need to prove your COVID status to go to the pub, travel abroad, or even go to work. Governments hope these passes could be key to kick-starting the economy and restoring basic freedoms. And tonight, we are getting a glimpse at how our post-pandemic world could operate. New York rolling out a new app some people call a COVID passport, a one-stop shop that stores your tests and vaccine status and notifies businesses and venues. Well, Gilbo, we know testing is so important to making sure that venues like Madison Square Garden behind us can open up safely. The city and state now promoting this new app that they hope will serve as essentially a COVID passport. Like when you go to the airport, you've got all of your documents in one place. Everyone we spoke with, some of them say this could be a potential game changer. Well, as immunization efforts ramp up around the world, some countries are considering implementing systems which would require people to show proof of inoculation before accessing certain facilities. A so-called vaccine passport program, it's already in place in Israel. Israelis must now scan in to get in to gyms, okay. hotels, even concerts like this. It is a all set in the telephone. It's very convenient. For more than three million Israelis and counting, this is the ticket back to some kind of normalcy. Finally, all the way in the car, I sank back to life, back to reality. <laughs> now countries across Europe and beyond are considering similar so-called vaccine passports or immunity certificate. This morning, health officials are warning parts of the country are on the brink of a fourth surge of coronavirus infections because more contagious variants of the virus are quickly infecting younger, unvaccinated people. Universal basic income, guaranteed payments to individuals with no strings attached. In Stockton, the program began under former mayor Michael Tubbs, looking to help the city recover from the 2008 crash. A fifth of Stockton's residents fall below the poverty line, and residents of color are disproportionately impacted. The experiment gave $500 per month for two years to 125 randomly selected low-income residents. Mayor Lovely Warren is calling for reparations for black and brown city residents, saying new marijuana legislation presents an opportunity to enact reparations through universal basic income and home ownership mortgage programs. UBI, or universal basic income, is a cash payment granted to all members of a community uh, with no strings attached and no work requirements. So it's the idea of free money for all, basically. Another image, um, less serious perhaps, but nonetheless very helpful, is that of Go Money in the game of Monopoly. So whenever you pass go in the game, the banker pays you a salary um, and you've done nothing to deserve the cash, right? You just get it because you're a player. One way to reduce this issue here again is to normalize public assistance, right? So if we are all welfare recipients, then it is much harder to blame or demonize the person in need of those benefits because we are all receiving it, right? So But it's something nonetheless that you get just for being a member of the community. 